The Bible prophesies that a 10 nation union will be formed in Europe during the end time. A powerful ruler will emerge from this 10 nation union to dominate the entire world. This ruler is referred to in the Bible as the Antichrist. Just such a 10 nation alliance is forming in Europe at this present time. Could we be on the brink of the appearance of the Antichrist? The prophecy of the coming 10 nation union is found in Daniel chapter seven, verse seven. And it states, after this, I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns. The prophecies of the Bible are written in symbols. However, in this prophecy, the symbols are interpreted for us in the same chapter where the prophecy is given. So Irvin, what does this beast represent? Daniel 7, 23 answers the question for us. We don't have to guess. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse or different from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. This verse tells us clearly that the beast is a kingdom or a nation. Then it goes on to explain that this kingdom will end up devouring the whole earth. This prophesied kingdom will become a world government, the world government foretold for the end time. Dave, I love this prophecy because it doesn't leave us guessing as to what it means. Every aspect of the beast is clearly explained. Verse 7 tells us that this beast has 10 horns. What do the 10 horns Symbolize. Well, we find the answer for these 10 horns in the 24th verse of chapter 7. And it states, and the 10 horns out of this kingdom are 10 kings that shall arise. So notice that there is one beast or one kingdom, but there's 10 kings. Now this paints a picture of 10 rulers merging their power into one kingdom. Looking back at verse eight, there's something else very important we need to notice. Daniel said, I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Well, this verse states that one horn will come up among the 10, uprooting three of them. So what, what does this mean? Verse 24 answers this question for us. It says that another king will arise after the first 10 and will subdue three of the 10. We're not told whether he will subdue them militarily or possibly by a political coup. Then verse eight also tells us that in the horn that uproots three were the eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. This prophecy is very important because this ruler that uproots three will then go on to become the antichrist. We know this from verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High 
and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So Dave, how can we tell from verse 25 that this last king will be the Antichrist? Well, the prophecy states that this king will do several things. Number one, he's going to speak great words against the Most High. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 through 4, we are told that the Antichrist referred to here as the man of sin and the son of perdition, will oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped. Then he will actually sit in the temple of God, claiming to be God himself. And secondly, he will hear, he will wear out the saints of the Most High. In Revelation 13, verse 1 through 7, it states that the Antichrist will make war against the saints of the Most High. This is referring to the time of the Great Tribulation. And then he will also, um, his brutal reign will continue for times, time, and the dividing of time, which is three and one half years. Revelation 13, 5 says that the Antichrist will reign for 42 months. There can be no doubt this king that uproots three will be the Antichrist. There's one more thing we definitely should not overlook. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 21 and 22, we are told, I beheld and the same horn, the little horn that came up on uprooted three, made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. From this passage, we know that the Antichrist will make war with the saints until the Ancient of Days, Jesus Christ, comes to the earth. At that time, the saints will possess the kingdom. Repeatedly in Scripture, we're taught that the saints will rule with Jesus Christ as kings and priests upon the earth when Jesus establishes his earthly kingdom. This brings us to the focus of our lesson today. When a 10 nation union appears upon the earth, the Antichrist cannot be far behind. Dave, a 10 nation alliance is being formed in the month of June, 2018. Prophecy students have been anxiously waiting for this incredible prophetic fulfillment for 2,000 years. It appears we may be watching this prophecy come to pass right now. Tell us what is taking place. On May 2nd, 2018, an article appeared in the political EU. The article was entitled, Emmanuel Macron's Coalition of the Willing. The article stated that French President Macron had become impatient with German foot dragging on putting together a European military force. Macron is bringing together a 10 nation coalition of the willing in June designed to prepare European armed forces to take action together in emergencies and to bind Britain into military cooperation as it leaves the EU. Defense ministers of France, the UK, Germany, Italy, Spain, the Netherlands, Belgium, Portugal, Denmark, and Estonia plan to sign a letter of intent in Paris pledging to develop a common strategic culture, share analysis and foresight on trouble spots that may require intervention and work to coordinate their forces for future operations. When we come back, we will answer the question that everyone wants to ask. Why should we think that the 10 nation union may be the 10 nation alliance out of which the Antichrist will emerge? The prophetic fulfillments all around us let us know we are now living in the end time. 
We are approaching the time of the Great Tribulation for God's people and the time for the Antichrist to appear on the world stage. When the Antichrist comes to power, he will deceive many, just like his father, Satan, the father of lies. While it is too early to say for certain who the Antichrist will be, you can know his characteristics, his government, and his tactics. You don't have to stumble blindly through the end time. We have put together six in-depth lessons revealing the shadow government of the Antichrist. In the Revealing of the Antichrist collection, you will learn where his government will come from, the key traits he will display, the type of leader he will be, and so much more. This collection includes The Antichrist and the False Prophet, Master Plan of the Dragon, The Final Seven Years, World Government Forming Now, New World Order is World Government, and The Holy Roman Empire Reborn. Go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 to request the revealing of the Antichrist collection. Because the end time is not coming, the end time is now. The End Time Prophecy Tour was the most wonderful tour. I would like to thank Irvin and Judy Baxter for a fabulous trip to Israel. I know it took much effort and planning to make it successful. What a tremendous time we all had, which warrants a great big thank you. You can't encapsulate it into words. You can't capture it with a photograph. You just have to experience Israel yourself. The Queen of Sheba said, the half has not been told. I concur. What an awesome experience to visit the land of Bible history and see it come alive as you walk its paths. I shall be forever changed. Dale from Louisiana. Join us October 25th through November 5th, 2018. You too can experience Israel with Irvin and Judy Baxter. Go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 to sign up today. Today we are talking about the beast with 10 horns. Now the question that everyone wants to ask, why should we think that this 10 nation union may be the 10 nation alliance out of which the Antichrist will emerge. Let's analyze what we know about this prophesied union. One, it will be on earth at the time of Jesus's second coming. We know this because Jesus will fight against the 10 nation union when he comes. Revelation 17, 12 and 14 explicitly tell us this. Listen to it. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast, with the Antichrist. These shall make war with the Lamb, that's Jesus, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. This ten nation union will be part of the reborn Holy Roman Empire. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 31 through 45, there's a statue with five sections foretelling the five kingdoms that will attain world government status from Babylon in 600 B.C. to the second coming of Jesus. The head of gold equals Babylon in the statue, which ruled the world from 606 B.C. to 539 B.C. The arms and breast of silver equals Media Persia, that defeated Babylon and then ruled from 539 to 331 B.C. The belly and thighs of brass in the statue symbolize the Grecian Empire and Alexander the Great. Greece's empire lasted from 331 to 197 B.C. The Roman Empire was symbolized by the legs of iron. Rome ruled the world from 197 B.C. to around 300 A.D. Finally, the feet and toes of iron mingled with clay symbolized the Holy Roman Empire. The iron shows that the Roman element would be carried over from the previous empire. The clay symbolizes the religious element that was added creating the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire ruled from 800 A.D. to 1806 A.D. It was reborn in 2009 
and will ultimately rule until the return of Jesus. The kingdom of God will be established when a great stone, representing Jesus and his kingdom, strikes the image on the feet, destroying the entire structure of human government. This teaches us that God will establish his kingdom during the time of the Holy Roman Empire. The ten toes of iron and clay are the very last part of the statue and will be in power at the time of the second coming. The ten toes represent the same thing as the ten horns in Daniel 7. Daniel 2.44, referring to the ten toes, says, and in the days of these kings, these ten kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. In the days of the ten toes, God will establish his kingdom. Daniel 7 states that in the days of the ten horns, God will establish his kingdom. It is obvious that the ten horns and the ten toes represent the same ten kings of the end time. So if we're watching the birth of the ten horn kingdom right now, that means we're getting very close to the return of Jesus to the earth, right? Yes, and it also means that the Antichrist will soon appear from among these ten kings. So let, let's back up for just a moment. According to what we've learned so far, the Ten Nation Union will come out of the Holy Roman Empire. Well, the Holy Roman Empire was born in 800 A.D. when Pope Leo III placed the crown on the head of German's leader, Charlemagne, pronouncing him the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire then ruled Europe for the next 1,000 years. But I thought the Holy Roman Empire died when Napoleon defeated the last Holy Roman Emperor, Francis II, in 1806. And if that is true, how could this ten nation union come from the Holy Roman Empire? The Holy Roman Empire was pronounced dead in 1806. Adolf Hitler attempted to revive it when he came to power in 1933. Hitler loved to dream about a 1,000-year Reich with German supremacy. His dreams all went up in the flames of World War II. However, the dream of the Holy Roman Empire has recently been reborn. Here's what happened. After World War II, Europe lay in ruins. The rivalry between Germany and France had resulted in the Franco-German War of 1870, World War I, and World War II. The leaders of Europe decided that the only way to stop these horrible wars was to drop their traditional rivalries and to work towards the rebirth of the Holy Roman Empire. Winston Churchill openly called for the formation of a United States of Europe. France and Germany formed what became known as the Franco-German Alliance and began to work toward the unification of Europe. The first step was to bring Europe together economically. The common market was formed in 1957 by the Treaty of Rome. Economic barriers separating the nations of Europe began to be eliminated. By 1992, 12 nations had dissolved all tariffs among themselves. The common market was complete. But achieving a common market was not the ultimate goal. The 12 nations then signed a new treaty called the Maastricht Treaty. And the purpose of the Maastricht Treaty was to join Europe together politically. It was agreed that a common money would be adopted. A European constitution would be written, a European parliament would be established, and a European president would then be chosen. Only then would Europe be able to speak with one voice on the world stage. Europe's leaders envisioned a United States of Europe 
but they decided to simply call it the European Union or the EU. By 1999, the common money was introduced called the Euro. On November 3rd, 2009, the European Constitution called the Treaty of Lisbon was adopted. Within weeks after this, a European president and a foreign minister were chosen. The Holy Roman Empire was now reborn. So that all would, would understand that the Holy Roman Empire was back. Several steps were taken to return Charlemagne, the father of the Holy Roman Empire, to his rightful place of honor. His picture was placed on the European Union's first coin, the Eku, and then a weekly column promoting European unification was established in Europe's most influential publication, The Economist magazine. And the page was titled, get this, The Charlemagne Page. And then a yearly prize of $1 million was awarded to the person that did the most each year to promote European integration. Well, the prize, it was called, guess what? The Charlemagne Prize. You see where they're going with this? Then to make sure the message that the Holy Roman Empire was back came through loud and clear. All who desired to join the European Union were required to make application at a specific building in Brussels, Belgium. Well, the name of the building? You guessed it, the Charlemagne Building. So the European Union is the Holy Roman Empire reborn. Absolutely. But let's not forget why all this is so important. The prophecy clearly foretells that the Antichrist will arise out of the prophesied ten nation union. Irvin, is there a leader driving the formation of the ten nation union and is there a possibility that he could be the Antichrist himself? The Economist magazine is reputed to be the world's most influential periodical. It has been referred to as the periodical of kings and presidents. The Economist is published out of London and is owned by Lord Rothschild. In its June 17, 2017 edition, The Economist features a story, Europe's Savior. The article focused on the meteoric political rise of Emmanuel Macron, France's newly elected president. Anytime a European politician is dubbed as Europe's savior, it raises suspicions, especially since the Bible specifically prophesies that the Antichrist will come out of Europe. So are there any factors that could point to the possibility that Macron could become the prophesied man of sin in the near future? He is presently the driving force behind this move toward the establishment of the Ten Nation Union. He is a strong advocate of a stronger European Union. He's very bold and a very visionary leader. And he's definitely an internationalist favoring a one world government. Macron also worked for the Rothschild Investment Bank for four years. The Rothschild family has been the world's foremost advocate of world government for many years, openly calling for the establishment of a new world order. And the Rothschilds have controlling interest in The Economist magazine that published the article introduced in Macron as Europe's savior. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Oh, and there's one more thing that really bothers me. It's his name, the name Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us. The Bible prophesies that the Antichrist will stand in the temple in Jerusalem claiming to be God. That really bothers me. Think of it. God with us, Macron. Let's conclude our lesson on the Ten Horn Kingdom with a word of caution. Many potential antichrists, such as Stalin, Hitler, Mussolini, and others, have come and gone. We simply don't have enough information yet to know who the antichrist might be. 
will we be able to know who it is for sure when he finally comes to power? Absolutely. We're just not at that point yet. However, the prophetic fulfillments all around us let us know that we are now in the end time. So, Irvin, what, what should we be doing with the information from today's study? The most important thing is to make sure we are ready for the end time and the second coming. We can do that by making sure we are born again. Jesus said, except a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. If you would like to know for sure that you are born again, call us at one 800 end time. We will send you our free brochure, What Do You Mean, Born Again. Or you can read the brochure by going to our website, endtime.com. The article is right there on our homepage. Once again, give us a call, 1-800-363-8463. The prophetic fulfillments all around us let us know we are now living in the end time. We are approaching the time of the great tribulation for God's people and the time for the Antichrist to appear on the world stage. When the Antichrist comes to power, he will deceive many just like his father, Satan, the father of lies. While it is too early to say for certain who the Antichrist will be, you can know his characteristics, his government, and his tactics. You don't have to stumble blindly through the end time. We have put together six in-depth lessons revealing the shadow government of the Antichrist. In the Revealing of the Antichrist collection, you will learn where his government will come from, the key traits he will display, the type of leader he will be, and so much more. This collection includes the Antichrist and the False Prophet, Master Plan of the Dragon, the Final Seven Years, World Government Forming Now, New World Order is World Government, and the Holy Roman Empire Reborn. Go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 to request the revealing of the Antichrist collection because the end time is not coming. The end time is now. Have you always wanted to know more about Bible prophecy? Well, now you can. Attend a prophecy conference hosted by End of the Ages, Irvin Baxter or Dave Robbins. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com events to see when Irvin or Dave will be in a location near you. 